Hey guys, today at 6 p.m. Central Time, United Candles launches our Friday the 13th special with Darkest Side of the Night. We have an updated fresh linen, and you bet your butt it smells like fresh linen. We've got the man behind the mask, and this one smells so good. Details on our Instagram page. We're bringing back Ghost to Hell, and I swear this one smells better than ever. But we've also got our Part 4 Banana Bread Candle. Yes, now when I say this is one of the best scents I've ever seen us do, I mean... This banana bread candle smells amazing. You're not going to miss it. Today, 6 p.m. Central Time, youneedacandles.com or on our Etsy page. Look at the description. I've got all the links there. Happy Friday the 13th. This is our day. Happy Friday the 13th, you dirty bastards. <laughs> Dude, I still haven't recovered from that top 100 list. Dude, I've been getting some messages about it. By the way, guys, we figured out the technical issues. And uh, knock on wood. This, this part, this, yeah, this presentation should be fucking pristine. <laughs> Ah, um, yeah, no, I've been getting messages about it, dude. A lot of people not happy about those lists either. Not just us. Well, dude, first of all, for everybody sending me pictures of the Babadook, go fuck yourself. Number two, yeah. I'm not doing a commentary on the Babadook. No, no, I told Christian, never. I will <laughs> never watch that movie again. Never. And we're not even going to do something where it's like, oh, tongue in cheek. Oh, if you pay this much. No, you couldn't pay me enough money. I fu fuck that movie. It's Seriously. a piece of shit. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing it. So, sorry if you guys like it, but as Christian would say, go fuck yourselves. Go fuck yourself. Um, well, Nick, today yeah. is a Friday the Thirteenth when this is coming out. Do you like? Do you look at it as a holiday? Do you look at Friday the Thirteenth as a like? Fuck yeah, dude. This is this is Jason Day. As soon as we start this Friday the Thirteenth stream, Nick's computer takes a giant shit. <laughs> Was Jason Lives a movie you liked from the first time you saw it? Yeah, yeah, because it's a movie that doesn't take itself seriously at all, and in the best kind of ways. Like, right. Jason Lives is a movie that it knows what it is, and, and that's not to say it's not good because it is good, but it leans into the meta, really campy side of things, and I and I, you get that from the very beginning with Jason's resurrection. So, like, yeah, it's it's a movie that knows what it is, and I've always had a good time with it. You know, this was never one. That I was like, ah, I don't really care for that one much. Uh, I usually know upon first watch, you know, with most movies, if I don't really care for it much, especially after a second watch, I'll really know, okay, fuck that movie. Uh, no, this movie's always been one I enjoyed. What is your least favorite Friday the 13th again? Is it Jason Goes Straight to Hell? Yep, without question. So do you just get no enjoyment out of that film? Yeah, that's hard. Um... I like the broad in the beginning that's naked in the shower. <laughs> she was um, in a tub, dog. That was a tub. Oh, yeah, the tub. Um, <laughs> I like Jason screaming when he blows up. Um, you know, like the like the coroner dude eating the heart. That's pretty gnarly. I mean, there's the Jason burgers. Like, there's, there's things in it that are cool, I guess. But I guess it's one of those things where it's like, because some people might try to have a gotcha moment with me right now and be like, oh, so you like Halloween ends because it's different and tries totally new shit, but you don't like Jason Goes to Hell, even though it's the same thing? No, 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 no. Because here's the difference. If you're going to be totally different, I need to have characters that I can like gravitate towards and like relate to and that I can enjoy. And I just didn't get that with Jason Goes to Hell. And maybe that's just me. Like, all these people talk about Creighton Duke. I don't really care for him at all. Quite frankly, I think he's just, I don't even know. Like, he's just there. It's like they, they try really hard to make him into something, and then he's just breaking fingers. And, like, it's just, 
I don't know. Like, there, there was just nobody that was super interesting to me. And you got this fucking baby and, like, I, it's... <laughs> No, dude, it's I, seriously though, like it's just they weren't interesting to me. They, it just wasn't interesting. I didn't care for all of that. Like, if you're gonna make a pretty much Jasonless movie, you better have some damn good people to fill that void. And I just don't think they did. And that's my opinion. I know people get enjoyment out of that movie. I know you're one of them. And like, again, more power to you because Halloween Ends worked for me, and it's very similar. You know, subvert expectations, give you something totally different. Some of them work for me. Some of them don't. And, and and Jason Goes to Hell is just one that has never worked for me. No, I feel you. As a matter of fact, five years ago, I would have said Jason Goes to Hell is better than Jason X. Five years later, I say Jason X is way better than Jason Goes to Hell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you Jason I mean? X is just, it, it's so fun. Jason X is coming so around, dude. Pe people are coming to it. They, they, they get it now. Oh, I, I come to it all the time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, the the, the 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 robot with the nipples falling off. Come on, but no, yeah, it's yeah, it. I don't know. That's just me though. Uh, I, I think it has one of the coolest, if not the coolest, poster in the entire series. <laughs> that, that poster is awesome. I think uh, Jason Lives has one of the best posters in the series. Yeah, Jason Lives poster is really cool. It is really cool. I do like this one too. Um, I don't know, unpopular opinion, but I think the first three posters in this series aren't really that interesting at all. Um, and then the final chapter's okay, but I felt like the poster started to get really good with, like, a new beginning. I don't know. Well, the, there's that... The American, I don't really... Like, I don't really like the American new beginning poster because if you, the theatrical poster for Part 5 is literally just text that says, if Jason still haunts you, you're not alone. Yes. Yeah. But the... The Asian, that the Asian, the uh, the European market. It's that cool shot of the mask and Tommy holding the machete that that's, I love. That's what I mean. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And then the VHS artwork is obviously just balls deep, awesome. And then Jason Lives has, I think, the second best in the in the poster game. New Blood's cool. I like it. But then Jason takes Manhattan with the one-two punch. Just it's not even a competition. I think that's the best one. Is Jason takes Manhattan. Yeah, oh, but, yeah, uh, no, Jason Takes Manhattan's poster is awesome. So we got to make sure we stay on top of this because, I don't know, depending on how long this podcast actually goes, God knows we're not, we don't have a, we don't have an expiration date, but we got to make sure we never double dip these, at least not anytime soon. We've commentated Jason Takes Manhattan and we've done Jason X. Is that the only two we've done so far? Um, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I'm going to throw my hat in the ring and say that I'd be willing to, you know, not soon, soon, but one of the ones I want to watch together soon enough is the remake. Uh, oh, fuck yes, dude. Why didn't we do that today? Nah, we're, we're, we're good. We're watching Jason yeah. Lives. But, and that's just because, like, maybe Christian can open my eyes to some things with that movie. Because I was texting him last year when I rewatched it again for the first time in years. I hadn't seen it in years. And I was texting him as I was watching it because he was really hoping that I was going to come around to that movie. And I still didn't like <clears throat> full disclosure. I still didn't come around to it. It's got some awesome kills. I think Derek Mears is awesome. And it's got like some of the best boobs in the franchise, like period. Right. So right. like, and the first 15 minutes are like literally peak Friday the 13th. He doesn't get better than that. Has my favorite kill in the whole series. The, the shish kebab sleeping bag. Like, oh yeah. But Man, I fucking hate the characters. Like, I hate them so much. They all suck. They all suck except Padalecki. And uh, even then, yeah, I don't know. So that's one that I, I, I'd be willing to give, I guess. I've probably seen it five or six times. Right. I'd be willing to give it a seventh try on the podcast. I don't know. There we go. If not, eventually the conversation will turn into what happens when we die <laughs> or something. Yeah. <laughs> it might yeah, happen no. tonight. Yeah, we've crossed that bridge before. Yeah. Yeah. So before we get started, guys, I really want to reiterate, if you're at the gym listening to us, if you are uh, driving listening to us, I assure you, you do not need to be watching the film with us. I promise mm. you. It, this is a conversation. The movie jumpstarts the conversation. We will certainly comment on things about Jason Lives as we're watching, but we're going to talk. We, it just There's no telling. It's like a guitar. This, this, these episodes are like a guitar solo that you don't have memorized. And as soon as it starts, you don't know what you're going to play. You're just going to start playing. That's basically what these are. 
Yeah. So, you know, whether you're working out, whether you're driving to work, whether you're fornicating, you know, I know a lot of people listen to us while they're <laughs> they're doing that. Um, you know, whatever it is, just know that you don't have to watch the movie while we're doing while you're, you know, while you're listening. Um, but uh, we do want to ask that you guys uh, subscribe to Christian's channel if you haven't already. If you've just come across this because you're looking for horror podcasts, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to my channel, The Lost River Drive-In. Uh, if you listen to us on audio platforms, leave us a like and a review, uh, you know, five star review or give us one star if you fucking hate us. Um, but just give us a review, give us some feedback, let us, you know, help us get out there guys. We're, you know, we're, we're really, we're really looking forward to some big things in 2023 for this podcast. We really, there's a lot of stuff we want to do this year. There really, yeah. really is. And the more we grow, the easier it is for us to do that. I am literally so close to 3,000 subs on my channel. It's ridiculous. Like, I'm right there. So, if mm. some of you guys listen. Go you subscribe, man. Me, yeah. Go subscribe. Um, yeah, help us, help us build this. Help us build this, this podcast up because we still want to get that white whale, which is Scout and Danielle. We still want to get yeah. really just Scout, honestly. Mm. <laughs> It'd be cool with just Scout. Mm. But, yeah. First of all, before we get this movie started, I want to know who the fuck knocked me off of the five star or knocked us off of the five stars on Spotify. Some rat bastard <laughs> motherfucker did not give us a five star rating on Spotify, and I want their ass. I don't know how it went, unless you just had a personal vendetta against one of us. Because, like, I'm biased, but, like, I feel like we're really genuine i feel like we're funny at times i feel like we're entertaining i feel like we engage with the audience like i do too i i, I don't know like this isn't a podcast where you know you're five minutes in and you're like this is really boring like no the, the shit happens all the time like we keep it we've been doing this for a year and, a, and some change now yeah so fuck you you rat bastard yeah you s <laughs> anyway let me get to the zero 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 mark yeah i have the uh the peak of the Paramount Mountain coming up. I'm at two seconds, technically. Okay. All right, uno momento. I got the uh, double MPA, or MPAA, <laughs> not the double MPA. <laughs> okay, Nick, count us down. All right. In five, four, three, two, one. Let's get it. <clears throat> so dude just to reiterate again um we did the last episode earlier this week and it was the top 100 greatest horror movies from some magazine paste magazine and uh oh shit i think both of us have to turn it now <laughs> God damn. yeah oh, i got my th there we go all right i'm i'm pretty low yeah, let me go to. I have to get up because I don't have batteries in my remote. <laughs> I have a toddler. I have a toddler. My batteries go to his fucking toys. So, hold on. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Guys, let me tell y'all something. I got a plasma TV for my buddy Jay when I went to go to a stay at his house. When we went to Texas for, uh, not Texas, uh, Scarefest. I love my plasma. It looks so good. Um, anyway, what I was saying, Nick, was... So... I was looking at the comments for today's podcast, and everybody seemed to really like... Or, excuse me, the podcast earlier this week, the Top 100 Movies from the Pace Magazine, and people seemed to really like that episode. So I think we are going to have to create our own list. Yeah, I look through the comments too, guys, and I always throw a like because uh, obviously it's Christian's channel, so I can't like leave a heart or whatever. But I always like the positive comments, even the negative ones. You know, the one that said, "Ugh, Nick is the worst." A few <laughs> weeks ago, I liked that one too. Uh, don't know how I'm the worst, but hey, whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I like them too. I always look at your guys' feedback as well. So. Uh, and I saw that everybody, and I saw a lot of comments too of people like, "This list sucks." Like, I don't want to be mean, but you know, I'm not trying to be an asshole. But this guy, like, it who was is bad, this guy? Dude. And I'm, yeah, it's really bad, like, really bad. 
I even saw someone commented and said they've seen every movie except one that was on that list. And I was like, Jesus, that's all. That's a lot because there was a lot of deep cuts in there that even Christian and I were like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. No, that's gnarly. There were some serious deep cuts in there. Um, I was – Sydney was listening to the podcast earlier too while she was getting some candles made and she, she couldn't believe – 28 days later made the list much less being in the top like 25 or whatever it was cuz she hates that movie too. I've I I I really can't stand that movie. I think it's an absolute piece of shit. It's sewer water. It is it's it's <laughs> I like fucking the, I like dog I when you said dog water that's my favorite. It's yeah, dog well, like, water. <laughs> when when I was a teenager, my buddy Tommy He's a big zombie movie fan, and I believe I had watched that with him when I, I mean, probably 15 years ago. Right. And uh, two years ago, my wife and I went on a weekend trip to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, literally the week that everything shut down because of COVID. Right. Because I remember we went into town on the second day we were there, and everything was like shutting down. And we're like, "What's happening?" And they're like, "Oh, this is you know the virus thing. Like we're we're shutting everything down." So like we came home to the shutdowns, but we did that because we had just had our son three months ago. So she called it like a like a baby moon or whatever, where you get away after you know you just had right, a kid. Right, right, right. So that's what we did. We went away for a weekend. Um, her mom watched our son and we just got a cabin up in the mountains and it was fun and everything. But like one night when we were there, uh, you know, we got drunk in the hot tub and then we came inside and we, 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 get, we started burning a fire in the fireplace and we were looking at movies on the streaming service. I can't remember what streaming service it was that we were looking at. And uh, she was like, oh, let's, you know, let's watch this. And it was 28 days later. And I was like, I haven't seen this in forever, but I remember liking it. And uh, dude, we watched... 15 20 minutes of it and i was like this is horrible and she was like yeah this sucks like turn this off and we we just we turned it off i mean Ugh. it's it's just bad dude it is it's, it's bad i don't like 28 weeks later it's a little bit better but still my review of that movie is this 28 minutes later is how is how fast i shut it off <laughs> you know that, that's basically my yeah, yeah. Uh, no, man. I don't even think we made it that far. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I think this is the best opening in any of the Friday the 13th films by far. This scene to me is great. I, I, I would say that, though, this Tommy is more demented than the Tommy in Part 5, though, considering he's digging up a corpse. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one's just not saying a damn... The other one's not saying shit, right? He's just being weird. This one's just digging up a body. Yeah, he just rips that <laughs> fucking piece of the fence off. You know, so what was interesting is the guy from Five, I didn't know this until he talked about it in Chris Lake Memories, He they wanted him to return to the, do this movie, and he became like a, he got really religious after this. And I always <laughs> wonder, I always wonder, like, the guy's name slips me, but like, you gotta wonder, like, how much regret do you have about that? Like, dude, Look how legendary these movies are, and you passed it up for God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, what bro. the fuck are you doing? For God, bro. What I mean, I'm sure God's fine with you making a paycheck. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. No. The, the these are fictional works. It's not real. So even if you are like super religious, it's it's just like I don't know. It's like my grandparents, dude. They're super hardcore old school like that where they think they don't watch these types of movies because they think they're like demented but like, hell. <laughs> yeah but my mom who's you know 50 jesus christ my mom is 54 my mom who's 54 and she's also you know very religious she loves horror movies right so, i think it's just kind of a generational generation yeah, yeah. You know, some most people nowadays realize like, yeah, it's fake. It's not a, it's a fucking movie. Like, come on. This one to me is like, this one feels the most like a quote unquote movie to me. It seems that just like it's on a bigger scale. You know, maybe it, it, it certainly compared to five, but yeah, it's a crazy dude because 
I I didn't like this movie at first. I could, I really don't understand what the. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what the fuck was wrong with me. Like, if, if I could talk to myself five six years ago, I would look at myself and say, "What the fuck's the matter with you?" Honestly, dude, it was probably because it didn't have that nihilistic, gritty kind of <clears throat> tone and vibe to it. This is the first, like you said. This is the first Friday the 13th movie that genuinely feels like kind of cinematic. 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 Yeah. So you're kind of like, this isn't Friday the 13th. It's like, but and, but once you warm up to it, you're like, yeah, it is. And it's it's a nice change of pace. It like, is. God, look at this fucking opening, dude. When he comes out of the grave like that, it's fucking amazing. What I want to know is why he got that match lit. With all that wind, but as soon as it starts raining, <laughs> you know, that dude, it storms. Yes, <laughs> not a drizzle. <laughs> oh man, dude, I don't care who the fuck you are. If you get whacked in the head with a shovel like that, you're at least bending a knee. I mean, oh. Jason didn't even. Punch. Dude, I know. Now, how often were you playing the Friday the Thirteenth game when that came out? Was it an everyday thing for you? I never played it. Oh fuck, dude. See, I want you to grab that game one day. I'm sure you can get it super cheap, but it was addicting. So addicting. I can't compare it to the Evil Dead game, but it was pretty fucking addicting. And this, the Part 6 Jason was my favorite one to play as. It was cool to me that they were able to... The, the game literally had different Jasons. You could play as Part 2, Part 3, Part 4, Part 5, Part 6, Part 7, Part 8. Jason Goes to Hell. And they never did get Jason X yet, but I think they were going to. But then the lawsuit stuff literally put all that on halt. Every, I mean, they, Gun Media was like, we're done. We cannot touch this game. We can't touch it. We it cannot add worth, anything. It wasn't worth it to them. It's just not. Like, the, the, the shitstorm that it was going to cause. Like, yeah. 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 And it's a shame that there is some some uh, hacks you can look up where people figured out how to, like, make a custom Uber Jason and, like, hack it into the game. That's really cool. But it was really cool. And what I'm hoping is Gun Media got the rights to do Texas Chainsaw, obviously. Can you imagine how cool it's going to be to play as, like, if you can pick part two Leatherface or pick the, you know, part five, uh, the remake Leatherface to play as? Like, that was, I really, really hope that's going to be the case where you can pick your certain character. But the thing is, they started to kind of create characters from the game, uh, like, in part three, the the biker gang they got the girl. The, who, is yeah. this your rubber? They got her. They got Shelly. They got Tom Matthews in the game. But then there's a lot of like no name '80s looking kids in there too. So I, I wonder how the how the balance is going to be. And with that, with uh, Texas Chainsaw, how they're going to make? Because I don't know if they're going to make Sally Hardesty or if they're going to make Stretch. You know, I hope they do. Yeah, but I, I really, I'm excited. I, I really hope they give us Sally from the new movie, man. I just, you know, what a, <laughs> what a character she would be to play. That's who Piz is going to play. Is that, the, is that the grandma hair? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny is Piz. No, no. I was talking about the old lady, Sally. From oh, that one, oh, okay. But, but Piz's girlfriend, grandma hair. Yeah, yeah. You know what's so funny about Piz? This is what I love about Piz. He never lets the joke die. He will never stop and say, okay, I'm just, I'm screwing around. Like, of course she's not like, but no, he, he, till this very day, he will never drop it. He's like, oh, I love her. I think she's beautiful. Till the day he'll die. He'll never, he'll never ease up on the joke. As he should. (laughs) Oh man. Now, uh, can we also talk about how this cop has one of the best turns ever like you don't like him at first because you're like dude he's telling you the truth you're not taking this seriously you're such a fucking dumbass with your head up your ass and then by the time he dies you're like damn it like i like you now like what a great turn he's a great right. character he was he really was i love his the cops death in this movie. is gnarly i love his death yeah it's crazy dude how the slasher genre when you really look at it, people always talk about how, oh, you know, by 83, 84, it was drying up. And I, look, I wasn't there, but I mean, when you really look at it, can't you almost say that like Elm Street kind of reinvigorated it to the next level? And the fact that it's like when you look at it, when 84 hits, 
now the, the the slasher movies were certainly there are still a ton of them, Nick. I haven't seen, and I mean a ton of them. Probably both of us. Vinegar Syndrome still putting out some of these movies. I never even heard of them, but like when you look at the decade, it just seems like there's still a shit ton of them coming out through the mid and late eighties, like nonstop. So I, I have a hard time understanding what they mean by that. Maybe they mean the popularity of the box office of them is one yeah. thing. And then only random ones would be like, this movie was good. Uh, for Halloween four ended up doing good. Even Halloween five. It's just like even Halloween five, even though it's not as, it wasn't as successful as four box office wise, but still it's just like, Dude, there's still a shit ton of slasher films that came out through, ent- through the entire decade. So well, I never really understood what they meant by that. When I say see, they, it's just the, it's what I hear. But see, that's the thing that's always kind of blown my mind. Because I'm going to look at it right now. Because I just want to get this completely accurate. So Halloween 4 made $17.8 <clears throat> million, Which did not blow the doors off of any any box office by the box office by any stretch and then hollow but but it was viewed as a big success relative to its budget it's five its million budget. yeah but even then halloween 5 11.6 million which relative to its budget was successful as well but like when we look back on history the the talk is always like wow four was such a hit and five was such a disappointment it's, it's like, not true no it's not at all it's not true <laughs> and not not only that, in the book that I was reading, the Taking Shape Two, Mustafa got gar- he a lot of the exhibitors were giving him were giving him flat guarantees from their uh, a lot of the, uh, I forgot what I don't remember if it said what cinema chains were doing it, but instead of the cinemas doing the dividends after like the end of the week or whatever to give the money to the producers and what what have you, they were offering. Mustafa flat guarantees to have Halloween five come out in the 89. So we don't really even know how much money Mustafa truly made from Halloween five. He might've actually came out smelling like a rose compared to the box office because of that. Um, But when he got the box office, that's why they, they put a halt on Halloween six for a little bit, but I found that very interesting. So dude, and it's not like we can't, it's not like somebody can ask Mustafa this now. Maybe if I ever asked Sean to ask if Sean ever had Malik come on, that would be my question uh, is about that. How much money did Halloween five make Mustafa? Because I want to know what those flat guarantees were. They never got into the number in the, in the book, but I think Mustafa came out smelling like a rose from Halloween five. Just oh. it, regardless of the budget. I mean, not the budget, regardless of the box office, because he got he got guarantees. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and honestly, to one thing that's that's always been really like this might this is going to piss somebody off. That's listening. <laughs> like I said, you don't need to be watching the movie. With this. Yeah, this is going <laughs> to piss somebody off. That's listening. But we, we do it every episode. I have always and will continue to always appreciate Malik far more than I ever did Mustafa. And that's not to say that I feel like Mustafa (laughs) did anything wrong. In a sense, I think Mustafa's problem was he was so caught in his, stuck in his own ways. And the only thing he cared about was continuing the franchise, whether it was good or not. It was just like, we need to get another movie out. We need to get another movie out. Think about this. Halloween had four movies come out in the 80s. The peak of the slasher craze. And the highest grossing of all four of them was $17.8 million. That is nothing compared to what Nightmare and Friday were doing in the 80s. It's nothing at all. Like, those movies dwarfed halloween in the 80s yeah halloween has been at its most successful at two points throughout history 78 and a lot of that can be attributed to erwin yablons and john carpenter and And right now 2007 on right and a lot of that's attributed to malik and say malik say what you will about malik but like he took the swing for rob zombie i mean he was like Let's do it. Let's let's give this guy the reins to this beloved franchise that I now own. And those two movies made him over $100 million. 
And then he was like, Blumhouse, fuck it. Let's do it. And let's let's get weird with it. And let's kind of switch things up. Malik's five movies that he has directly overseen. Fucking hundreds of millions. Yeah, and, and they've been so vastly different in so many ways. Like, it hasn't been just about keeping the franchise going. It's been about, like, like dude, there was a nine-year layoff between Halloween 2 and Halloween 2018. Nine and, years. Yeah, and you've got to do that sometimes. And, and, and Mustafa would have never... Never Halloween, done that. Halloween Resurrection, it underperformed at the box office. It still made money, but compared to H2O, it underperformed, and it was trashed critically. <laughs> and he was immediately like, Halloween 9. We need scripts for Halloween 9. It was like, never stop. Like, he just, don't stop. Put out another one. Put out another one. It's just like, no, every now and then we do need to take our time and be like, okay, hold on. Like, we need to evaluate things here. Yeah. No. So, yeah, Malik always gets high marks for me always I, I pray to god that sean will actually get malik on the podcast i just want to hear him talk unedited long form oh dude he's got a really nice speaking voice too i, I he's he's really got a nice voice to listen to i bet he does he does he's in you know in a lot of the halloween interviews that he's done i i, I really like malik i really do and i do too i think that although he is obviously a very good businessman i just i don't know i feel like he does care about the franchise quite a bit i i don't think he it's about pumping movies out just to make money because if it was they'd be developing be the next Halloween right movie now. right now yeah yeah they, they'd be in development and what sean told me and christian i can't remember if he said it like on the episode but probably not he told we had to edit it out <laughs> yeah and I, I won't get into details with all of it sean told us like yeah, Malik is still listening to ideas. He's he's always listening, but right now he's he's out vacationing. He's out. He's, <laughs> I, bet he, I bet he is. Yeah, he was like he's not really. It's not at the forefront of his mind right now. Like people are like Halloween ends. Oh, you know, it was trashed critically, and but it made over a hundred million dollars. Like you no, know, it's like, like we, yeah, we just got Use Your Illusion one and two. Basically, Guns N' Roses isn't putting out an album for next year. You know, well, technically they did. They did the spaghetti incident, but that was all covers. But my point is, when you put out three movies like that, yeah, I say pump the brakes, let yeah, it Blum, breathe. The three Blumhouse movies brought in five hundred million dollars. Five hundred million dollars. <laughs> like Malik, if if all he cared about was getting the product out there again, they'd be working on a new movie right now. Yeah. And it was Malik, Christian. It was Malik that that stopped Halloween Returns. It was Malik. Because at the end of the day, it's his decision. And he was like, no, you want to film this in another country just to save money? No, we film That's it fair. in America or it doesn't happen. Yeah. And he pulled the plug on it. That's interesting. Um, well, speaking about speaking of box office and things like that, Piz swear he doesn't he doesn't say and this is public. It's not like this is something Piz has said to me privately. Piz and when I when I did a show with him the other day, he was like we're going to hear about a Friday the 13th movie this year. We're going to hear about it. Do you actually think in your opinion that a Friday the 13th film is going to be happening as well as the television show? No, you don't uh, No, This is what I'll say. I agree I, with you. I, I think I, that's too much. I think, at once. Gonna, I think they're going to wait to at least till the, the show premieres. They're going to late. They're going to wait to see, the viewership, the interest, and they're going to wait to see how it's received. And I think if the viewership is there and it's received really well, I think they'll continue in that format for a while. And I don't think a lot of people really looked into that interview that, um, what's his face? Who's the guy doing it? Um, not Bruckner. Who is it? Um, In interview from what, from uh, where, who's, who's the showrunner for the Friday the 13th show? Uh, I know exactly who you're talking about. Let me Google it. Oh, fuck. What are you talking about? The article that he gave when he yeah, when, when the, it all the, went down? The interview, yeah. Let me he, look it up. Okay. Describe describe what he said, and I'll give you the name as you're talking. He said, we've essentially already been given the green light for two seasons. He he's, But nobody's talking about that. Like, nobody's talking about that. He said it in the interview. He was like we're already looking at this as like a two season thing. And we've pretty much already been greenlit for two seasons, but he's like, obviously, you know, something along the lines of like, you don't want to get ahead of yourself and blah, blah, blah. But 
apparently A24 and whoever else is behind it is going into this going, we're going to finance two seasons of this. Like, so I think that people aren't, I feel like that got missed so much online because I read the whole interview and I was like, he just mentioned doing two seasons. Like, yeah, Brian Fuller, Brian Fuller. Yeah. They're doing so they're going to do two seasons of this show and i think that if it's well received like the viewership is there and everything i think they'll continue in this format for a little bit um and is that what i want no not at all i want to go see a friday the 13th movie on the big screen again but christian on the one hand you have to look at it this way if the show is quality and it's good and it can keep you coming back for more and say there are eight episode seasons that are you know an hour long that's like eight hours of Friday the 13th content every year and eight good hours, mind you. So if it's good, yeah, it's on the small screen, but it's a lot of content and it's good content. Now, if it's bad, I worry that if the viewership isn't there or the reviews aren't there, we could see this franchise languish again because they might be like, oh, well, nobody wants to see Jason clearly. And if that's the case, no, you're wrong. That's not what it is. They, they don't. They just maybe they just don't want this format. The, the, and, and here's the thing: this is what really fucking threw me off. Because I read the interview you were you're talking about. I actually have it pulled up right now. This is what I think people are forgetting. And I get it. I, I don't think it's it's not people trying to be like, oh well, they can't blah blah blah. It's confusing, and I understand it because there's a lot of moving parts. When I read this, this fucked me up. So for starters, what characters and locations or whatnot are you allowed to use from the Friday the 13th franchise? Brian Fuller, everything. We can use everything. Dude, these lawyers have found this massive loophole with using Victor's script in America because Peacock streams only in America. Yep. And through the television avenue, I Sean has to be involved in some in some capacity, right? The fact that they can use everything, I am ecstatic about that. I think if people truly think this is just going to be Pamela Voorhees, you are so fucking wrong. This is going to... Dude, you know what I think could be cool, Nick, is if the show is some sort of just retelling of the origin of Jason and things like that, I think you could kind of do like this weird... Not even necessarily a half and half thing. Dude, we're going to see Hockey Mask in this show. There's no fucking way we're not going to. Um, Fuller, now here's Fuller literally said you will see multiple iterations of Jason. Of Jason. Now here's the question. Let's just kind of cast this a little bit. In my mind, if we're going to have Pamela in this show and if we're going to show a Pamela during this era, like uh, excuse me, an older age Pamela like we see in the first movie, you know who I think would be fucking fantastic for that role? At her age and the way she actually has her hair style nowadays is Dee Wallace. I think she'd be a fucking oh. awesome Pamela, you know? Yeah, Dee is great. Wouldn't yeah. she be great? Yeah. She was She was the best part of Jeepers Creepers Reborn. Uh, uh, <laughs> I actually felt like she was overacting in it. And maybe that's just Is she it, overacting or was she the only one no, acting? I, I was just about to say maybe that's just because in comparison to everybody else. Um, no, that would be cool. But yeah, no, the people that think that this is just all going to be Pamela, like I've got a bridge to sell you because like, no, you really think they're that dumb? Like that they would dedicate two seasons worth of material to a Pamela Voorhees origin story. That's not going to keep everybody's attention. Nobody's even, even the Pamela fans, which I'm a Pamela fan, but my wife is the biggest, but even she, I mean, yeah, you gotta when you say it out loud, it sounds silly. Oh, it's gonna be a show about Pamela Voorhees. Called, it's gonna, but they can use everything. But it's gonna be a show about Pamela. It, it sounds silly when you say it out loud. Then you realize to yourself, no, no, no. Like this is gonna be a Friday the Thirteenth show. The only thing that sucks, man, is if, the, like you said, if the show was great, I'm cool, dude. Like I really am. I'm, I'm not big on television. I will say that Wednesday really gave me a boost. And I fucking love the show. Couldn't wait to watch it. I didn't want it to end. But I have to see. An, if if only seeing if seeing one Friday the 13th movie. Excuse me. Two. I saw Jason X when I was a, was a kid. But it really doesn't count. I can only. I was terrified. So I can't really remember the 
I, I, I didn't enjoy the experience. But if seeing the remake is the only Friday the 13th movie I get to see in the theater, I'm going to be fucking pissed. I have got to see another Friday the 13th movie in the theater. Um, yeah, dude, now here's the only, the, the only nightmare movie I saw in theaters was the remake. And it, it's like, yeah, when I when, when part things like that make me say to myself, that can't be it. You know, that can't, that just cannot be it. But, you know, here's my question. Would you assume a 24 would also produce the film? And does that not just sound fucking weird to you? If that happens, or does X uh, kind of soften that blow of just like the well, what? Yeah, it doesn't really sound that weird to me, honestly, uh, because I feel like as much as A24 has gotten its name as being more of this like underground, lower budget indie kind of studio, soon enough, they're not going to be able to be that anymore. And what I mean by that is like they continue to have these modest to pretty big hits on their hands, they're eventually going to become a major studio. It's just going to happen. Like, I saw everything everywhere all at once, but that movie made over $100 million. You know, you get a couple more movies like that, which I'm sure they will, and you're no longer the, the, the indie studio. Now, you could still fund indie movies, and you could still put them out and distribute them and give them that kind of flair and feel, but like, 10, 15 years from now, if A24 stays on the trajectory they are, they're going to be a major studio. So, like, no, it doesn't sound that weird to me. Yeah. Um, but maybe, maybe five years ago, it would have been like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, because even five years ago with Hereditary, it was like, it, A24 was still relatively new, and I remember actually being weary about it, because I'm like, yeah, but this just seems like one of those, you know, those studios, like, oh... We're this new hip up and coming studio. Look at all our hip cool movies that we're putting out. And like they actually ended up being one of those. I mean, you see those kind of things crop up every now and then, these new names and in, in, in the game that you're like, oh, is this gonna last though? A twenty four has shown that they, they are gonna have staying power. Right. So yeah, I, I don't I don't think it'd be too weird. Plus, like you said, with X they showed that they can do it and do it right. So do and by doing right. it and by doing it and doing it right, that means not a committee, not a board around pe- like a round table of suits and ties saying this is what we got to make this blah blah blah. They let a talented motherfucker write and direct his got his own movie. You know, I mean, it, it, not just that Christian, they gave him a, pretty much a guarantee up front for a trilogy. Like not only were they like they saw what he was doing with X while he was doing it. And he was like, I really want to do more of these. And they were like, you know what? Fuck it. Do it. Like, yeah, we believe in you. Do it. We need more studios like that. We really, really do need more studios like that that aren't on this bullshit, let's take it one movie at a time approach. No. If the budget isn't too high and you know that you have a quality filmmaker or writer or cast or whatever it may be behind the project, it's going to make some money, enough to justify another movie. Right. And sometimes... I, I, this is a weird analogy, but you know, since I'm, I, this, this, my, our season ended today and I'm wearing a Jersey of our, of our rookie quarterback. It's like that. It's like, you can't judge somebody off of what they, like they're young or they're, they're new to the, the game or the system or whatever they're doing. There's baby steps along the way. Like you, if you see promise, st- stick it out with them, you know, don't just pull the plug. And, and they did that with Ty West. And right. that's why I really like A24 because it's like I'm starting to really like A24 because that commitment to Ty West and to that trilogy, I think Maxine's going to be the biggest hit out of all of them because it's the most easily digestible of all three, like to the masses. When you release a trailer, 1985, Hollywood, sex, drugs, rock and roll, I'm down. Like you're going to get more people to go see that than you got to see Pearl or X. So... And A24 is going to be richer because of it. And so, like, you know. Yeah. Hey, here's a question. So, with this movie taking place in the 80s, Maxine, and A24 now producing Crystal Lake, do you think in Maxine, the film, we're going to see maybe like a big poster of Jason? Or, you know what I'm saying? Do you think we might, we might get a little bit? 
not necessarily the Crystal Lake show, but just like uh, like an Easter egg, you know like what I Easter mean? Like Easter eggs. Yeah, say if it takes place in '85, maybe they've got we'll a the final new beginning. chapter or the new beginning poster on a billboard or something. Yeah, I really think you could. Wouldn't yeah. that be cool? Yeah, yeah. Maybe not because then it get, you got to wonder: is that Paramount property with the first eight movies? Who knows? But I I think we'll get some sort of Jason like. Somebody well, because will, Maxine, yeah. as far as we know, hasn't started filming yet. It starts soon, but it hasn't started yet. Well, maybe I don't think it has. I mean, granted, hey, he filmed that prequel secretly, dude. Who knows what the fuck's going on right now? Yeah, I mean, he did say it's coming out this year, so it's either about to start filming or has already been filming because. Yeah. Yeah, I know in the fall they put out a press release that was like for an ex- to be an uh, an extra in Maxine or whatever. They were looking for extras. Where are they filming? Uh, in California, L.A. So. Oh um, wow. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, dude. Well, like, you know, it, it's just I'm I'm really starting. I feel like I need to stop being so pessimistic about the TV show stuff. I mean, granted, I always bitch and complain that I, I, it's like it's too much time. It's too much time. And then I'll watch a show like Wednesday that I really enjoy and I don't want it to end. And I don't know, dude. I, I just figure what's the point of bitching about it at this point? If they're making Crystal Lake, you, you want you've you've been asking for Jason stuff. This is what we've this is what we're getting. I'm not going to condemn it. Yeah, dude, now take take what you can fucking get. Take a win every now and then. Take a win. Like, I mean, Halloween 2018, dude, like perfect example in recent memory of a, of a franchise that hadn't been around in a while. And there was a lot of people that were like, really, we're doing the, the Jamie Lee Curtis thing again. And it's like, just take what you can get. Like, just yeah. just take it. Like, because do you want to go another decade without this character? Like, just fucking take the win and and hope for the best. That reminds me, there's a big debate on the Internet and there's two there's. I want to say there's two camps. There's really three. And I think I fall in what I would call the middle camp. There are people that love their legacy horror movies. There are people... I'm going to put us in the same camp. I'm assuming you're just like me. I think you are. I think I've even heard you say it. I think there are people like us that say, I love watching these great movies I grew up with and seeing new entries. Whether I like them or not, it's still fun. And I also love seeing new movies, Men, X, blah, 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 blah. And then there's the other camp that says, fuck this shit. Let's move on. And I don't see what the harm is in today's market where you literally get the best of both worlds may not be the right word to use. Because if you're somebody that thinks a lot of these legacy movies by today's standards are are crap compared to them, that's fine. But for me, I love this song, but and she is smoking hot. She is almost hotter to me because she won't take her shirt off. Is that weird? Like, you know what I'm saying? No, yes, you're right. Oh, she's you're, smoking. Yeah. I freaking love this broad. But I don't see I, – I, I, I can understand the pe- – I can understand the side saying, screw this stuff, it's taking away from blah, blah, blah. But I don't understand why there's a problem with having a market where you clearly have both – right now and we're so fucking blessed to be able to go see halloween ends and then a few weeks later go see um megan or go which i need to see for some reason people are saying this goddamn movie's good nick i was for sure this movie's gonna be a hunk of shit everybody is saying this goddamn movie is good no i know i have no interest i mean just no interest at all that's i've got to see it now though everybody's saying it's good I know I have to see it too because I'm sure I probably will have fun with it. But I mean, I just seeing the trailers and everything, I had no interest. It just looks stupid. (laughs) Yeah. But to your point, dude, I feel the exact same way. And it's like, I've always felt that way is like, what are you even complaining about? Like, I feel like right now we have a good mix. Like we're getting both. Like people are like, we need more original horror ideas. Uh, it's coming out the them. ass. Yeah, we get them. What we really need is people to go support them. Go watch them in theaters. Why did X only make $13 million? Now, granted, the budget was a million, so it was very profitable. But why did it only make $13 million? 
Like you, you tell me like these original ideas are out there. You're just not going to support them. So like, and also what's the harm in having legacy sequels out there as well? Like there's something for everyone. It makes so many people happy. And yes. I, I, I really don't want to get into the tree hugging sound. It just makes people happy. No, but seriously, there's a, you know what? Here's the truth to me, Nick. Maybe if stuff comes around that truly defines our generation and can get people to stop thinking about those movies, then okay. But, dude, the fact of the matter is Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween is so embedded in culture to this very day. The way Dracula... Why do people not bitch about that? Nobody bitches about Dracula. We got a, Dude, we got Nicolas Cage as Dracula this year. How come people aren't saying, fuck Dracula, let's move on from Dracula? Nobody says that. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's the difference? <laughs> I, I, I think it's I think it's literally just like a pissing contest. I think that's what it really is. Just people like, I think part of it is like wanting to see certain characters back and certain franchises back and feeling like we get a little uh, over. The market gets oversaturated with certain movies and certain franchises and maybe that's true i mean especially in recent years it feels like halloween's been everywhere you know there's been a new movie damn near every year and it's just like a lot of people are getting burnt out on it and um that's cool but there's tens of millions of people that aren't burnt out on it and so like i i don't know like i just i just feel like it's a complete and total waste of time to uh, yeah it's it's just really it's really annoying to me because I just it, it's all there like dude look at the last decade it's been yeah I mean like, but but when dude we, like seriously hereditary yeah when we make our top 50 lists we are gonna have at least 20 films I'm sure or, or, or around 20 films that are from 2000 up signs yeah. hereditary the descent yep. saw the conjuring. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, what are we talking about here? It's all there. It's all there. We're still getting movies. To we are this fucking day. blessed. Yes. In the we're horror genre, we're getting movies to this day that are going to be looked back on. Our generation is going to have plenty of horror classics that are original ideas. So, yeah. like, we have both. Like, I think we're in the. We are so blessed, dude. It's like I get excited just thinking about this year, and like, dude, it's almost like. Who the fuck? It's not. Are there going to be any good horror films this year? It's going to be who is going to end up being the best because the competition seems stiff, and it's a fair game because I think the legacy sequel movies are actually starting to get a little bit better than they were three, four years ago. Like I, I anticipate Scream Six being fucking awesome. Um, I think Saw. I, I have no reason to believe that Saw. Like Jigsaw was not that great. Granted, it was fun in the theater. But the movie is beyond pointless. But then, oh, yeah. I mean, but then Spiral was kind of like, "Hey, let's take this property, but let's do something a little bit fresh and different with it. Let's go left when we should be going right, possibly. Let's let's subvert and put Chris Rock in this movie, who actually I think championed the when it, But I would say most people would agree Spiral was a step above Jigsaw. Yeah, I have no reason to believe that Saw Ten is not going to be better than Jigsaw. I think we're well, it almost. Jigs Dude, Jigsaw's problem was two things. It, it, that one, you did the oh, you motherfuckers, you did the this was actually the first game and it happened ten years ago thing. Like it's like it didn't matter yes, when you find that like, out. And then you tried to be like, oh, and there was also this other apprentice the whole time, even though he's already had like twenty seven. And it was just like at this point, like you're insulting my intelligence. Right. And two, it gave us John Kramer in one scene. If you're going to bring Tobin Bell into a Saw movie, give me more than one fucking scene. Like, or make it meaningful. Yes. <laughs> like, like, who you, cares what happened in 2003? <laughs> yes. Like, and, and from what I've heard, his, his role is obviously a lot more substantial in this one. So, yeah. like, uh, good. It, you've already started off on the right foot for me if I know I'm going to get a lot of Tobin Bell. Like, uh, I do. You got to have him. You got to have the, Tobin. Give him the backwards hat to make him look younger. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. give him the backwards. Yeah. Let's the get best. makeup department on this. We yeah, got to de-age. We got to de-age Tobin. De-aging. Yeah. All right. He's got a backwards hat. He's good. 
But um, Dude, can you yeah, imagine man. sitting down eating dinner with this guy? Uh, Toby, you pass the salt. I'll pass the salt, but I want to play a game. <laughs> oh, never mind, I don't need it. Dude, you've you seen the you seen the jigsaw, uh, the Billy the puppet, like the skits online where it's oh, dude, dude living with jigsaw. It's literally I've, I love them. I it makes me cry still to this day when I watch it. Where he's just in bed with me, he's like Gary, 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 Gary. Gary that was good. Surrounded the fuck by mousetraps. <laughs> Yeah, that would scare like, the shit out of me. Yeah, no. But, it, it, yeah, anyway, before we get off, too off topic, like, yeah, dude, like, we're in a golden era right now where we're getting, like, quality legacy sequels and, like, good original ideas, too. So it's like, like, we're having our cake and eating it, too. Like, I, I literally can't be upset, like, at all. And I just feel like a lot of people that bitch about that, they just want to incessantly bitch. Like, it's just it's, like their yeah. thing. I can't, I can't, I'm just over that. It, I, I hate to bitch about people bitching, but that's just what I'm doing. Guys, do, do y'all want to go back to, you know, 2014, 2015? Or do you want to go back to, like, do, do y'all do y'all really want to, re, like, relive? Th- those were some lean fucking years. Like, 2013 to 2016, besides the fucking Conjuring universe, w- w- <laughs> you know, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot. Listen, okay. From 2000 onward, we've got mo- blessed right now. Go ahead. I'm we've, sorry. We've gotten movies and franchises such as Final Destination, Saw, The Ring, Trick or Treat, The Scream movies, House of a Thousand Corpses, Jeepers Creepers. Um, let's see. Uh,. I'm going to keep going because pretty much everything I just fucking named, they're bangers. The Descent. Uh, obviously, we got Jordan Peele. The Strangers. Um, Drag Me to Hell. Let Me In. Orphan. The Mist. Like, American Psycho. There's the the Collector. Hostile movies. Like Hostile's great. There's literally been so many burdening franchises that have been born. Paranormal Activity. Like... So many great fucking horror movies just in the last 20 years. Like, we're not in some fucking dry spell right now. Like, we're not. We're not. Like, this is a. This has been a really good time. And it's like, been so fun. I'm. T- I'm just because you know how this goes, Christian. You and I both know how this goes, and everybody, every single one of you listening knows how this goes. Soon enough, we will. Get into Plummet. a valley. We will get into a valley and it'll fucking suck for a few years. So you better enjoy this now because five years from now, we could be seeing movies that are just like Jeepers Creepers Reborn left and right. <laughs> left and right. Now, and, do you want to live in a world where you no. see Jeepers Creepers Reborn left and right? No. <laughs> I can I can watch Jeepers Creepers Reborn. You know, I can have that be the one movie like that all year and I'm fine with it. But if there's... <laughs> Six or seven horror movies I go see that are like that. I'm like Jesus Christ. You know, you talking God. about. I wanted. I wanted to go back to something. You were talking about X being modest in terms of its box office returns. This is where I think Paramount are just the kings at what at, at, of just promotion, dude. Smile d- couldn't have cost more than ten million, right? I, I don't know. Maybe you could look that up. Uh, the budget for Smile, I want to say it was right around twenty million. Re- okay, but... fair enough, because it's it's a big. It, they probably it was that was certainly a big union film. They probably seventeen million. Okay, I was seventeen. Actually, going to guess that too, which per- is why perfect. And the movie, did the movie did what? The movie made two hundred and sixteen. Okay, this is why Paramount are the kings. And me and look, me and Nick t- have had conversations about this where. We would see individuals, and it's nothing personal. It's like I'm, I'm going to name those people. It doesn't matter. It was actually a number of people that were saying, this is one of the things that I would hear. It's a real shame Paramount promoted this. It was a, as, as a matter of fact, I saw failure. It would, you would see, I would see people say Paramount really failed promoting Smile. It's actually a good film. First of all, what the fuck does that even mean? Second of all, what's the point of promotion, Nick? To get what in return? Asses in the seats. What Money. did what did Paramount do? 
They got asses in the seats. So what the fuck is anybody talking about when they say that it was a failed promotion? Oh, the movie wasn't what you thought it was based on the promotion? Sounds like a you problem. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what are we talking about here? Only this is the problem with everybody being able to have an opinion <laughs> nowadays because this shit makes no fucking sense. They, they fucking succeeded tremendously. Dude, Paramount knew exactly what they were doing with Paranormal Activity. This demand it for your theaters. You guys really don't think Paramount had the money to just shove Paranormal Activity in every theater in the world? No, they created pseudo-viral marketing. They are brilliant. Paramount is the best at promotion. They know exactly what the fuck they're doing. And Smile is a perfect example. I Before I saw Smile, and granted, I the movie's fine. I don't hate the movie by any stretch. I, I bought it. I think it's fine. I would watch it again. I could even end up liking it more. But the fact of the matter is, every, I, I remember, Nick, when, I, when me and T Sydney were watching TV and we saw this thing about this broad at like a Brewers game or something, yep. and she's smiling. I was like, this is stupid. But I never forgot it. It stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. Smile. I was going to say, the budget was seventeen million to make the movie. I am. I would. I'm willing to bet my house that they put at least twenty million extra into marketing because you couldn't go anywhere without, without hearing seeing about it. So yeah, Th I mean they're the best. They put a fuckload of money into the marketing of that movie, and guess what? It they paid got off big time, big time. And that is the we we've talked about this on the show. That is the one thing that I need to see more of from A24. Which is the what one, I was getting to, yeah. Yes, the one movie they really marketed the shit out of was Everything Everywhere All at Once. And Great what movie, did it too, do? Over a lot of money. Over $100 million. Yeah. Market the fuck. And I get why they do it, because they're like, if we don't put a ton into a marketing budget, we're guaranteed to make money on every movie. And yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. But if you put ten million into marketing for a movie that costs like two million, that could be the difference between a fifteen million dollar box office and fifty. Yeah, and awareness is key, man. Awareness yes. is every—it's everything, quite frankly. So I hope with Maxine, they really—and I think they will do more marketing for it because I think obviously Pearl and X have done incredibly well on home media as well and streaming and whatnot. They so had to have, yeah. It, yeah, it's popular in the zeitgeist now, but also they're going to have a prime opportunity to lean into that 80s nostalgia with the marketing because they know what sells right now 80s Har 80s, 80s yes. horror and you know it's interesting dude when people talk about quote unquote the death of physical media somebody actually asked me today or yesterday christian people i'm here it's always they right we never know who they is but like people say they say you know Mm -hmm. but this person said hey christian they say that physical media is about to be dead blah 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 what's going on and it's like well, you know, everything's going to eventually come to an end, I'm sure. But the interesting thing, Nick, is... And I'm not a big Kevin Smith fan. I like some of his movies. But the fact of the matter is... Jay and Silent Bob Reboot did so much money on physical media that Lionsgate straight up said to Kevin Smith, Hey, we just made a fortune on this movie on DVD, Blu-ray, and Blu-ray. Do you have any other movies you can make for seven million bucks? Boom. Boom. That's how you got Clerks 3. Physical media made Clerks 3 happen. Think about that. I mean, so what are we talking about here? The you Bat know, I, the, the Batman made almost $30 million last year on physical media. How alone. cool is that? Top yeah. Gun Maverick probably is doing close to the same. I bought yeah. it on 4K. You know? If it's a good movie, they'll buy it. buy it. They'll buy it. They'll buy it. Yeah. So I don't think, to, to answer that question, if you're listening to this, I can't remember who it was. I don't think it's going anywhere, especially not, especially not in the next couple of years. I mean, no. is it what is is it what it was 10, 15 years ago? No, because more people can stream stuff. But I think there's still enough people buying movies. Not to mention the boutique labels; they're solely dependent on the collectors buying these movies. And Scream Factory, Arrow, they certainly show no signs of stopping. As a matter of fact. We've gotten more boutique labels come in the last 10 years than less. So, yep. I mean, what, enjoy your movies. Keep buying them. You know, 
If anybody wants to know where we are in the movie, Tom Matthews has a face full of camel toe. So <laughs> uh, that's where we're at. But no, I wanted to uh, I wanted to touch on something now that we're talking about smile and, and marketing and whatnot, because I've seen a lot of takes on the Internet over the past few days. And Christian has been one of them. Now, Christian didn't rail it like other people did. But a lot of people are taking issue with Evil Dead Rise's poster. A lot of people are taking issue with it. I'm not and a big fan of it, dude. Can I, Before you get going, can I just give my two cents on this? Sure. There's no way you won't meet me halfway. No, I was going to say, I was I was actually about to say, I'll meet you halfway here. But because, yeah. it, it, and it's not, the, look, I'm singling out Evil Dead Rise, but tr- what I'm really saying is I have a problem with, with posters today. And it's not that everything needs to be a hand-painted drawing. Because you know what? Posters are really cool. The X movie posters. Pearl has a cool poster. Um, I hate to just bring up those two movies. Um, in, in general, though, I think posters have just gotten shitty, and it's almost like they just don't. It seems like they don't matter. But it really breaks my heart when Eve, when Army of Darkness had three of the most amazing posters ever: the UK quad poster, uh, the uh, red poster, and then the theatrical poster that's that's making fun of uh, vacation. It's a vacation spoof, uh-huh. and it bums me out. When I look at, and I even like the uh, Evil Dead remake poster, this big, beautiful red poster where you see the girl. And I look at the poster for Evil Dead Rise, and I'm just, I just feel like, fuck, man, I feel like we've just fallen. And I hate, it's not just Evil Dead Rise, but I feel like that's happened. I mean, even like when I look at the Halloween posters, I just say to myself, fuck, these are just, no, they don't give me those cool feelings the way I look at the original Halloween poster or, for basically, from H two O on, I'm just like, we uh, no no no, I'm lying. The Rob Zombie ones are fucking awesome. Those are great, and I'm just like, why does the poster not seem like it matters as much anymore? That's my big thing. It's not really just Evil Dead, but I'm just bummed out that I feel the poster game is just no. It's it's less important nowadays. But go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say too. The only Halloween poster I like at, since Rob Zombie's to Halloween Two is Halloween Kills. Like that, That's I, the I best out of the three for sure. Yeah, I didn't care for ends or for 2018. Kills at least had fire yeah, I, and it's glow. It's the fire and the glow. Yeah, like it, I, I love that poster. Fair enough. But here's my thing with Evil Dead Rise's poster. And when I say I can meet you halfway, you're right. These, po- one, posters aren't the same. Like They're not what they used to be. Especially when you compare it to the, the, you know, say the Army of Darkness ones you were talking about, or even the 2013 movie. Absolutely nowhere near the quality. But Warner Brothers is making the right decision here. And I've had conversations with people about this. Like, well, what do you mean? Like, what, what do you mean? How is, how is that the right decision? They're trying to make sure that this movie is a $100 million plus movie. And people will go, well, what does that have to do with the poster and the marketing of the movie? Because the poster makes it look like a type of movie that's like Smile or a possession movie or your your spooky ghost story that you get every year that always makes $150 million at the box office on a modest budget. They're leaning into the casual viewer, not the deadite. Because us deadites, us deadheads, whatever you want to call them, we're going to be there opening weekend. We're going to go see that movie. But is the 15-year-old with his girlfriend going to go see it? Is I'm like, you want this movie to look like a smile or something like that. because Which did just make a shit ton of money. It works. Yeah, and that's what they're trying to do. It is very evident to me. That they're trying, they're leaning into the creep factor, like, ooh, this is spooky, ooh, like, rather than the what Evil Dead is, and we know what Evil Dead is, and when you watch that red band trailer, I'm which I've at the watched poster right now, I've watched the green band trailer and the red band, and the green band band trailer is a lot more about the possession. The red band, which is the one that first got released that everybody saw, is a lot more about the carnage. So, as an Evil Dead fan. I prefer the red band trailer because it shows me that I'm going to get a fucking cheese grater to the leg and a tattoo gun in the eye and shit like that. And I'm like, right. oh, yeah, 
But the Green Band trailer is more about, oh, my mom is possessed. What, what's happening to her? Oh my God, it's so spooky. Like, and that's the right way to go. Because guys, not a single movie in that franchise has made a hundred million dollars. Not a single one. And it's, Evil Dead is a, for, it's an often forgot franchise. It's like Hellraiser. There are so many good, Evil Dead, every movie is good. And it just doesn't get talked about like the other ones. Like, hardcore horror fans will talk about it. But your casual horror fan, they may have heard of it. They haven't seen all the movies or remember all the movies. Because it just, it never broke through in pop culture like these other series did. And it's a shame because Evil Dead is the most consistent horror franchise. It, it is. And if that trailer is any, in, any indication, Evil Dead Rise is going to be awesome too. So that the series is literally going to continue to bat a thousand without a bad entry. So let me ask you this then. What did Evil Dead make 10 Evil years Dead, ago? 2013 was, I want to say, 70 million. And because uh, that was a weird time for remakes in 2013. I feel wow, like they almost uh, missed the boat. 97.5 million. Actually, okay. Almost 100 million. So do you really think. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm really just asking for your prediction, really. Do you really think that this one will be more successful than the remake? Evil Dead Rise will make between 150 to 200 million dollars. You yeah. really think so? I, Even though it, it's, I, I'm, yes, it, it's interesting with the title. I, and I don't get me wrong, I actually love the title of the film because it's not just Evil Dead again. I would have thought that'd have been stupid and it would have made me mad. The fact that there's a title for this movie, Evil Dead Rise, I love. Because I feel like it's it's respecting the fans. And it's not just saying, oh, we're going to bring in a new audience and just act like nothing else ever happened. And But the fact that it is its own thing and it's this, I, I don't know, it's not a requel or anything. It just feels like it's going to live in well, the world. Yeah, right? Uh, Lee Cronin said when the trailer came out, he gave an interview to Collider, I think, or it was, it was, some, it was some website. And uh, in his interview, he was asked about that. The, I, the interviewer said... Well, this trailer, and by the way, I agree and absolutely love this. Uh, they were like, this trailer gives off like a lot of very similar vibes and, and tone to the 2013 movie. Is is this a continuation to the 2013 movie? Is there, you know, like, what is this? And Lee Cronin was like, uh, there's connective tissue to the previous movies throughout. There's drop Mo lines. Wait, 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 like, movies? Yes. Oh. So there's going to be maybe lines maybe i th but he made mention that like this exists in that same universe um so there's gonna be some parallels to draw there i personally think it's a spiritual sequel to 2013 i do i do think that the 2013 movie happened and um this is years later maybe you know obviously maybe no, no connection at all to 2013 like in the story this story itself but it's, right. it is in canon yeah that movie happened um and yeah in tone it looks and just feels just like that movie like watching that movie it had that nihilistic it, it just like i i fucking i love that trailer by the way i mean we <clears> i did too we haven't talked about that on the podcast yet i loved that trailer and i, uh, I did too the the line at the end with uh, the, and I tweeted about it where she says mommy's with the maggots now. Dude, gross. It gets Here, under my skin. Here's the thing though, and it's not positive or negative. It's just new, and I don't know how to feel about it until I see it. This is the first one with a kid in it. You yeah. know what I mean? So I I I'm. I think it ups the ante. Personally, it, it, I, I, it, it very well could, and I it probably it probably does and should, but. It's uh, it's just throwing me off a little bit. I don't know how to feel about that because I've never seen that before. But I think the mom character looks like whoever this broad is. She looks like she's giving it a hell of a performance, as good as the girl from 2013 did. Um, and, and, and let's call it like it is. I mean, the only your favorite Evil Dead movie is Army of Darkness. And what does Army of Darkness have in common with Evil Dead Rise? They're the only two in this series so far that have done this, including the TV show. Changed up the formula. Every other entry in this has been group of friends, cabin, cabin in the woods, book. Yes. Yeah. Evil Dead Rise is not that. Army of Darkness was not that. Yeah. So this franchise has already proven 
that they can step out of their comfort zone and still nail it. So like I, I'm not I am not worried in the slightest about that. I, I'm really not. I I also respect the fuck out of them changing the tone of the films and not trying to be not trying to be Army of Darkness or Evil Dead Two. I mean, it's clear that they are like, no, these movies are where you Army of Darkness is clearly like I would say sixty. 70 30 where it's comedy 70 percent and horror 30 percent you might even say 80 20 because it's really yeah. just funny where the remake was just pretty fucking intense but but you know one thing that gets like i i always see this slip through the cracks and it pisses me off people say like some people that don't like the 2013 movie which i don't know how you can't i that movie's <laughs> incredible but people will say well, it just didn't have the comedy, you know, it didn't it didn't have what the other movies had. Yes, it did. It was just a different kind of comedy. It was like dark. Humor. Yeah. Like there yeah. was some of the lines that Mia says when she's possessed, they're creepy as fuck, but they're funny. Like it's like I mean, it's just gross like some of the shit she says like uh oh, when she's talking to her brother she's like come down here and let me suck your cock pretty boy <laughs> like it's fucked up but you laugh like it's, it's fucked up. funny and then like when she's about when uh natalie's about to cut her arm off and she's like don't cut it off you fucking bitch like there's it's funny dude like it's just a different kind of comedy and maybe people want the more slapstick but like don't you dare try to tell me that evil dead lost its sense of humor because it didn't it's just funny in a different way now yeah, I'm. I'm really. When does when? So when does Evil Dead Rise hit theaters? April twenty first. Did you I realize there. April April's gonna be fucking banging? We've got Renfield, which I can't wait for, and yeah, Evil fun. Dead Rise. It, it looks fun. It really does look fun. Yeah, but yeah. um, one thing. Uh, yeah, I do believe Evil Dead Rise is gonna is it is going to clear a hundred million dollars. Absolutely. And one thing I saw you mention, and I saw a lot of people mention. And I, not, not enough people are picking up on this. And it's kind of frustrating me. People are going, and the Necronomicon looks different. It does it's look weird. different. Why do, like, why does the Necronomicon look different? Lee Cronin said it in his interview, and it like completely was like, oh my God, you're right. Remember in Army of Darkness where it's mentioned that there's three different books? And uh, Lee, Cro Lee Cronin literally said in his interview, <clears throat> Sam had one for his movies. Fede had one for his movie. This is the third book. There's three books in this universe. Oh, uh, cool. This is, this is the third book. So he's saying it is not the same Necronomicon from Sam Raimi's movie, but the 2013 Necronomicon wasn't that Necronomicon either because right. they've already set up in canon. There's three different ones okay. that all do the same thing. So, which would, it makes sense too, you know, like you wouldn't just have one, if, if, if this was work of like the occult or Satanists or whatever, there's more than, you know, one group of Satanists that would want to summon demons, you know, so there's three books and this is the third book. I'm excited for it. I, I, I'm really ready now. Do you just Dude. think of it? actually from, looks kind of scary. Like, am I does. wrong? Well, because it has that J horror mm -hmm. grime look to it. And, you know, like they're in some kind of apartment high rise. Where does this movie take place? Chicago, New York or something like that? Or I don't know if they said this city. Um, let me Google it. But to just think about this. Just fucking think about this. March, a March and April, just those two months alone, we're going to go see Scream, Nicolas Cage as fucking Dracula. Los Angeles. Los Angeles, okay. But just in... Between March and April, we're seeing Scream, Nicolas Cage as fucking Dracula, and a new Evil Dead film. I mean, what the fuck are we talking about here? We're going to have plenty to talk about on the podcast. I'm, I'm literally, I really can't wait. Like, I mean, this is fucking crazy to me. This is probably going to, I think this is going to be the best year in horror. Possibly. Not just that, but you, you already mentioned it earlier, dude. Like. Saw 10 coming this year. Saw Maxine 10. Coming Maxine. This year. Yeah. And then like, think about the stuff that's just going to come out. Yeah. Like from, a, like, you know, like X and Pearl did. Nobody knew about that. And then that shit came out last year and it took the horror world by storm. Or like for you, for instance, men, a movie that floored a lot of people that nobody knew. Nobody. Was coming. I don't understand that, dude. Like when you go going back to X for a second, by the way, we're watching Jason lives. 
Yeah, um, we are. We are going back to X for a second. It's cra- the only reason I found out about it is being in the c- connected into the horror world, but really also being a fan of Ty West. But like, dude, if I walk up to my mom right now who watches TV on a regular basis, my dad, same thing. And they watch TV commercials all the time. If I would have said, mom, have you seen the new movie X? She would say, what is that? Uh-huh. That's a problem. You know yeah. what I mean? No, it's yeah, it's a problem. Um, honestly, though, if I tried to show my mom a movie like X, she would ask me what the fuck was wrong with me, which is funny because like my mom went and saw all these 80 slasher movies in theaters. When she same was, fucking thing. Yeah. And it's like, it's the same thing. Like it, it's literally the same thing. People have sex, then get killed in heinous ways. Like, I don't know why this X seems so risque when it came out too. Like, I remember the only trailers that came out for it were Red Band trailers. Red so Band, like, yeah. yeah, it was already like, oh, this movie's not really that appropriate. And it's like, yeah, but w- were any of these slasher movies when slashers were in their heyday? No. Like, why are we, why, where's this, I don't get it. And dude, that's another thing about X is like, there's really not that much nudity in it. Like, there really isn't. Most of, I, I don't know, like, it, that's a conversation for another day. But I, I just think that. Yeah, no, I, I I hear you. And speaking to Ty West, I think I'm pretty sure I told you about this the other day. I finally watched The Sacrament. That was the only Ty West movie I hadn't seen. I know it's Christian's favorite Ty West movie, and I liked it a lot. You know, the whole Jim Jones thing, like he fucking nailed it. My mm-hmm. only issue with The Sacrament was it was not what I expected. I expected it to be some kind of spooky, like religious cult story, kind of. And while it was like a religious cult, it wasn't necessarily horror. Um, and that's my own expectation, but that's also because of who Ty West is. Every movie I had seen of his up to that point was creepy and genuinely got under my skin at times, like The Innkeepers, House of the Devil, like X has moments like that. Pearl is very unsettling just with its like, character study and, and the, the psychosis of individuals. Right, and, right, yeah, right, So right. this was the first one <clears throat> that was really just kind of like straightforward in the sense of like, yes, yeah, this crazy religious cult you know jim jones type shit waco you know like so i i dug it but i was like but it wasn't scary like and and ty west up to this point had just been able to unnerve me in pretty much every movie you know i um i'm trying to think of what my least favorite movie of his of his is i don't think i can say i have a least favorite i mean i love even what's though his, he, what's he, his, he, it's the innkeepers, house of the devil. He halfway uh, directed Cabin Fever two. <laughs> oh, that movie sucks. So is yours, Cabin Fever. He, I don't, he, I don't know what happened. I think, I really think he, he directed he half the movie. Yeah, he and he must have come on after it had already begun because I don't think Ty West would ever have created something like that from scratch because that <laughs> movie sucks. I love Eli Roth's first first movie, Cabin Fever. Yeah, speaking of which, did you hear about Eli Roth's new movie? We're gonna get a Thanksgiving horror movie. It's literally called Thanksgiving, and it's coming out next year or this year. Uh, this year, next year. Yeah, this year. Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. So we're I'm, gonna finally have a Thanksgiving horror movie that we can add to November. I want to say I heard him mention that on the Charles Band podcast a few weeks ago, but I can't remember. But I feel like Eli is like Mister Producer slash Let's do TV shows. Let me host TV shows for Sci Fi and American History Channel now. Yeah, because that's all I see him doing. And I'm like, dude, you're a good director. You're a good writer. Like, please go back to making fucking movies again. You know? Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. But but I'm just excited because we've talked about this many times. November is a fucking wasteland for horror. I I genuinely don't know why we haven't gotten more Thanksgiving themed horror movies because it's, it's just like Christmas in the sense of it's a holiday where families gather for the holiday. Like how many you, you can literally make so many horror movies about that like it's just i don't know i don't know but um yeah man i i so my my, uh, he didn't ty west direct a few segments of one of the vhs movies as well probably so yeah that sounds i was thinking that's what it was i could be wrong but i'm gonna um right now we're gonna find yeah You need to catch up on those, man. VHS 94 and uh, 99. I, I watched 94, and I, I, I enjoyed it, but... Did you have a favorite segment? Ratma. Ratma? Yeah. 
rat man yeah that shit was creepy that was I, genuinely creepy i, I, liked I you didn't like the uh funeral i'd love the funeral no, that's the, my the, favorite that the, the ratma one and the funeral one were my two favorites then like, it gets kind of weak after that yes and and but i feel like i feel like the best vhs movie is vhs 2 Still without question day. without yeah. fucking question that cult thing yeah. dude that cult scene will that cult scene whips your ass so this is his disco- not discography his filmography the roost trigger man which i have not seen either one of those but they look pretty low budget house of the devil cabin fever 2 the innkeepers <sighs> the sacrament in a valley of violence that's not really a horror movie that is a yeah that i haven't seen like that a, either it's like a western um, X Pearl and Maxine, and then he did the uh, segment. Uh, it's called Second Honeymoon of VHS, and um, Second Honeymoon is that the one? I'm assuming that's the one where they're sleeping, and then like people break in their yes. hotel. Yeah. Okay, that wasn't Which bad. Which is good. Yeah. So of of what I've seen, I guess technically... Okay, so here's the thing about Cabin Fever 2. It is the only movie that Ty West has directed, technically, that he was not a writer, producer, and editor on. He literally was only behind the camera. He Just did not write it. He didn't produce it. He didn't edit it. Right. So, it's not really a Ty West movie, then. No. no. By, that, by definition, it's, I guess. Yep. Yeah. House of the Dead... I'm going to say House of the Devil is still my favorite of his. I really am. Uh, it's not. It's a safe answer. I, Yeah, I love the sacrament, man. That's not a safe answer because I feel like a lot of people nowadays, especially now, would say X or Pearl, hands down. Like, I, I, I mean, think I, most I, people are going to say Pearl. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm with you. I like you. X I, more than Pearl. I would, put the, I would put House of the Devil over X and Pearl still. Okay, so X actually made $15 million. Pearl made nine point four million. Then but you gotta again, wonder. You gotta wonder what the DVDs did to twenty five million dollars, and a combined budget of two million. You can't really beat that. And the crazy thing, dude, is the films look fucking gorgeous. I mean, they really do. It's like, I don't know. I know some yeah, people were. Some people are like, um, "I'm burnt out on this. I'm ready for Ty West to do something else." Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is like the renaissance right now of Ty West. Like, I I want more. I hope I hope there's something else after Maxine. The him Dude, and Mia Goth are a match made in heaven. They, and it's they, a shame. It's a shame too that people are just starting to get to know this guy because he has he has a lot of really good movies. And I, it's just a bummer because I'm like, guys, I remember when I first saw House of the Devil years ago. I that was a blind buy. For me i blind bought that and, and it just uh, was like fuck this is good oh yeah i was like this movie rocks like it literally looks like it could have been made in the 70s too like it does so yeah, well he, he nailed the aesthetic yeah and the innkeepers is a your prototypical slow burn like the first hour or so not a lot happens it's all build up but that last 15 20 minutes creeped me the fuck out the first time i watched it yeah like yeah that was a good movie I didn't see that until last year. I didn't know it was Ty West. I had it, I and I just never watched it. I saw it in 2018 because yeah. I remember because it was right before I met my wife, and I was working a job where I, would, I wouldn't get home from work until 1 or 2 a.m. every night that I worked. So when I got home from work, my routine was I was going to search for a horror movie that I hadn't seen before and stream it. And, you know, I'd stay up till 5, 6 a.m. because I'd have to be at work at, you know, 3 the next day or whatever. So that was kind of my schedule. And that was one of those movies. Uh, at the same time, I watched The Autopsy of Jane Doe for the first time. And like, Fucking great movie. Oh, uh, that would – I would put that movie in a top 100 list. I would. Me too. I, I, I think that movie is gen- – it's scary as fuck. Like, and it's never going to be the way – it's not that way anymore when you watch it. You can still appreciate it, but – the first time you watch the autopsy of Jane Doe, that movie's fucking scary. Shit's good, I, dude. I don't care what anybody says. It's scary. I agree. Oh man. Come on, you pussy. Come on, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I like the ending of Jason Lives, but um 
I don't know. I don't know what the best ending is of one of the Friday movies. Probably Final Chapter. Although 3 has a great ending, three, too. Yeah, yep, 3 does, too. I like 3 a lot, man. It's um, It goes up on my list all the time. Yeah, I know it's not a popular opinion for it to be, you know, the favorite for someone. That's why I like, I, you know, people would be like, what, that's your favorite? I'm like, yeah, I know. Like, I yeah. And most people would agree it's top five. Like, I haven't really seen many people not give it its due, but I don't. I don't know. It's just it. I. It was the. Uh, I don't know. It's just always stuck with me. I. I think it was the first time. Honestly, I think what it is when I was watching these movies for the first time when I was a kid. I think it was the first time I was afraid of Jason, and I think it was just because of how big he is. But it was also that fucking ending, dude. With his mask off, banging on the window and hissing, and then, yeah, it comes running after her. That is the best ending. Yeah, you're just kind of like, oh my god, this guy's f- fucking scary. Like, yeah. So I, I'll give it that. Yeah. So I think Jason Lives has the best opening, but Part Three has the best ending. And out of the first four posters, I think I like Part Three's the most, even though it's like kind of weird and he's got hair. I like the sh- the shower thing. But even the part four poster, the theatrical ju- the theatrical poster for part four is not the hockey mask with blood no, on it. No, it's just text, isn't it? It's just four and five are just fucking text. <laughs> yeah, you know. But I like C.J. Graham. I thought he was a good Jason. But I, I think he it's good that he was just contained to this film because Kane Kane was perfect for seven and that movie. But who do you think should like, if if Jason is in the show, in the new show, do you think they should go with like a new guy, get some new blood in there, and and let somebody else take the reins, or yeah, would you don't. be like, good, let's get Derek back, or you know, Kane's always lobbying to play it. Do you think Kane's yeah. just too old at this point, and it's just if you people say like, oh, Kane could still do it, guys. All respect to Kane Hodder, but Christian and I saw him recently at a con, and it's not the Kane Hodder you remember. Um, I, I don't want to see him play Jason. Yeah, anymore. it was funny was he was on when he was on Scout and Danielle's podcast probably a month ago. He said he got really really sick. I think he had a a, a non fatal heart attack actually, and he lost like thirty pounds because he was skinny. Yeah. He was skinny when we saw him. Now, he could get that muscle back, but at his age, dude, he's like 66. Yeah, and I mean, he's 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 done his part. He's he done amazing things. Yeah, he doesn't need to do it anymore. And, like, if you're trying to jumpstart the series again, go younger. Like, I, I don't know. It, it's No one wants it. No one likes these musical chairs of, of replacing... I don't know. It's like... It's always great when you get an actor committed to multiple, like James Jude Courtney for Halloween. Like he was perfect for Michael Myers, and getting yeah. him for the trilogy was awesome. Because like I feel like if you get a different, it's, and I have no problem with Don Shanks in Halloween Five, but it's very jarring in the Thorn trilogy. You get Wilbur, Shanks, Wilbur. It's like, let's just have Wilbur for all three. Like if if you're gonna have Wilbur for four and six, and I know why it didn't happen, but I'm just saying like. It's nice to keep that continuity. So go with somebody that's younger. But I will yeah. say, too, I have always wanted to see, selfishly, Tyler Maine as Jason. I think that he, I think that'd be awesome. Uh, but it all just depends on what kind of Jason you're going for. If, if it was, like, remake-style Jason, yeah, Tyler Maine would be fucking perfect. Um, yeah. But, yeah. I was going to say, like, yeah, that would be cool. And I'm with you. I, and I think it's like, yeah... It, Let's say had they if let's say if they had been like well who played Michael last because he was yeah let's just get the guy who played it last okay Tyler Maine's coming back for the new Halloween films that'd have been cool but then you wouldn't have had James Hugh Courtney yeah you know but at the and same I was, time I you don't want to recast you you want to recast in that because it, it that is because then it lives start. in that world yeah yes yeah but at the same time Devil's Advocate if the headline in two months says Derek Mears to reprise Jason in Crystal Lake show. I wouldn't be upset because I like Derek. No, I wouldn't be either. I wouldn't be either. 
I can't believe. Think about this, Nick. The remake came out twelve fucking years ago. Actually, no, no, no. It's longer than that, right? If it was two thousand nine, it's twenty twenty three right now. That's fourteen years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're Holy going on. shit! It'll be fourteen. I'm thinking it's twenty twenty one still. It'll be four. Yeah, it'll be fourteen in what February is when it this came out. This shit's right? gotta stop, dude. <laughs> yeah, this shit has to stop. It does. It does. But uh, it's not gonna stop. No, that's why, dude. I'm just trying to enjoy every goddamn day of my life. I really am. Yeah, me too. Uh, sometimes we get caught up in just the fucking routines of everything that we kind of lose sight of that sometimes you know, yeah. we're, we're all guilty of that but yeah, it just man. it's crazy when you think about all the stuff that happened last year i feel like we're we still should be living last year in a sense because i remember when we started doing episodes last year we were talking about the shit coming out i feel like just yesterday just yesterday me and you were texting after getting out of terrifier 2 saying dude what the fuck was that and we were talking like i feel like that just happened yeah, that was funny too because Terrifier Two was just like Halloween ends. Christian and I saw it opening night, but the hour time difference. Uh, Terrifier Two, I got out an hour before he got out, so I didn't have his reaction yet, and he walked out to my reaction and then gave me his, and then Halloween ends was the opposite. He got out about a half hour or so before I got out. So when I walked out of the theater, I walked out to his reaction. Uh, and that shit is really cool. That's that shit's really cool. I remember the first thing I thought of when I was walking out of Halloween Ends before I went through my phone. I was like, "Oh God, what is what did Christian think?" Like, <laughs> I didn't know at the time either. <laughs> I really you know, didn't. I, I remember your text. Your text said, um, "Dude, I'm gonna be honest. I kind of loved it," and I was like, "Dude, same." Like, <laughs> and it was it was cool. But and then Terrifier Two was like, "Did that just I, happen?" <laughs> Yeah, like I would, I like so badly wanted Christian to just get out of the fucking movie because, like, I needed to talk to somebody about it. I was like, I just saw that movie on a big screen. Like, what the fuck? And, like, nobody I knew had seen it yet because I saw it Thursday, the Thursday it came out. Nobody I knew had seen it yet. And I was like, someone watch this fucking movie so I can talk about it. Cause, like, dude, that fucking movie, like, goddamn. Yeah, that's another thing. Literally, Terrifier, an original horror idea, and again, an example of let a director grow. Don't judge everything off the first movie. You know, the the first swing you take isn't the only swing you can take. Like, let a director grow. Give him a movie, okay? Now give him another one and see if they really grow into it. And Terrifier 2 is a perfect example of that. It's amazing. There were, there were good aspects of Terrifier, but there is no way you could convince me Terrifier is better than Terrifier 2. And here, here's no the thing, way. and here's the thing, Nick, and I say this with love because I'm sure Terrifier 3 is going to be great. I read somewhere where he Damien said that he wants Terrifier 3 to really be like the original Halloween. Like he really wants to go for suspense in the next one. And if he does that, cool. They're going to make more, and they're probably going to be good, and we're probably going to love them. But we'll never, nothing is ever going to be like Terrifier 2 because of what it did. You know, because now, now he's at the dance, right? He's, yep. he's, he's arrived and he's at the dance. But we're never going to be able to relive the experience of being a part of a movement with Terrifier again. Maybe something else will do that, and we'll shake, shake up, shake the tree, and be like this little movie yeah. that could. But the terrifiers after this will not have the same feeling of us no. being like we. In the moment, I'm sure you felt the same way. You knew you were a part of something special. Yeah, that was the moment that the moment that song by the Midnight hits in the beginning, that synth thing, you knew like, oh my god, like. I, I, am I really sitting here watching yeah. this in, in the multiplex right now? No, I, I can't lie to you, dude. I, I went and saw it by myself, and um, I, I genuinely had that thought when I was sitting in the theater at multiple points while I was watching that movie. I knew I was a part of something. Like, I knew that I was witnessing 
history. And uh, very rarely does that happen. You know, very rarely do you go see a movie and think, I'm a part of something. This is going to be a big deal. And, like, that's how I felt when I was watching Terrifier 2. Um, very rarely have I felt that way. Uh, Halloween 2018 was another movie I felt that way, but not because I enjoyed it so much, but just because as you're watching it, sometimes with certain movies you just know, like, this is going to resonate with people. Oh, this yeah. Is gonna, this is going to do numbers. Like, this is a... This is something. Yeah. It was like Kiss getting back. It's like Kiss putting the makeup back on, and when they got back together, it's like you – there was a moment where, like, before that was going on, dude, I, I truly thought, oh, I'm never seeing another Halloween in, in the theater again. It's it's yep. done, you know? And the vibe, dude, I got to be honest with you. The vibe between Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 and Halloween 2018 were totally different. I loved seeing Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 in theaters. I went opening night. It wasn't, it wasn't sold out. No. It wasn't sold out, and it wasn't some raucous crowd. Like, not at all. And you could just kind of feel it in the air. As yeah. much as I love the movie, you could kind of feel like... And then when the box office numbers for The weekend came out, and that the worst Final Destination movie out of all of them beat Halloween, you were kind of like, okay, yeah, this... I don't know. This doesn't have a good vibe to it. But Halloween 2018 was totally different. I mean, packed crowd... Um, it, it, people screaming and laughing in the theater, and it was just like you just knew, like you knew, like this is this is the start of something big again. Uh, just had a different energy to it. So, yeah, Terrifier Two was that way, um, and uh, I, I hope we get another movie like that this year. But honestly, it there's not a high chance we will, and that's that's fine because. When those moments are sparse like that, I think it makes them a little more special. A little more special. Yeah. Now, here's what I want to know, man. A few things. First, let me let me, let me get to this, and then I'll bring up something I just looked at. Where does Rob Zombie go from here in terms of movies? Because I feel like he's at a serious crossroads, especially now that you've listened to the Charles Band podcast and you heard yeah. him talk. He has no interest in making any movie where he's going to have somebody breathing down his neck anymore. Yeah, no, which is why I asked this question at the con to Bill Mosley, and uh, I'll just say it now. I, I feel very confident in saying Rob's next movie is going to be a sequel to something he's made already. Um, I just know it will. He's going to want to do something where he has more control, less, less of a budget, less of studio interference, that's why he did three from hell because he was like, I, I, and, and 31 and stuff where, and Lords of Salem, he talked about that too on the podcast. He was literally like, Jason Blum was like, Hey, here, have this money, go for it. And he didn't breathe down my neck and he just kind of let me do my thing. And he was like, he said something along the lines of like, you know, I don't know if he was very happy with it. Cause you know, I haven't worked with him since, but, um, I think that's where Rob's at. He's, it, it, even if it's not a sequel, it's going to be a lower budget venture. I, I just don't know if we're ever going to see Rob do a big budget theatrical movie again. Well, let me ask you this. What would seem more plausible to you? Rob Zombie doing a Blumhouse movie again? Or Rob Zombie working with A24? Oh, A24. You think so? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Blumhouse has become the machine when it comes to horror and uh i don't think rob wants to be a part of the machine I, I i just i really don't say what you want about rob zombie he does have integrity like he does have like and he doesn't need the money because he's talked about a tour yeah. he's gonna make a, a thousand times more than he would make with the movie anyway uh, he told he told charlie Ban like this was years ago when halloween was being talked about when the weinsteins approached him about directing it in 2006 and he was like bob asked me Oh, you know, you broke, you need money, kid. You know, and uh, he was like, he was no, like, he was like, I have more money than I know what to do with. And it's true. Like, he doesn't need the money. Like, he, so, no, I think that Rob is at a point where he, he won't sell his soul again. He sold his soul for Halloween. And um, that's because he loved the original and, and, and he wanted to, you know, put his name out there as well. As yeah, but he fucking director. took it back for Halloween, too, dude. He fought tooth and yes. fucking nail to yes, take it back and he was very open about that process on that episode too where he was basically like i did whatever the fuck i wanted like i he's like i would turn in 
dailies or, or, you know, I would hear from Bob, you know, every day and he'd be like, you can't fucking do this. This is fucking terrible. This is awful. And he's basically was just like, don't care. I'm doing it. And we got the other side of that kind of from Sean. When we talked to Sean, the reason was Malik owned the, the rights and Malik was in Rob's corner the whole time. So no matter what Bob Weinstein said, <clears throat> Rob knew, well, Malik is the big boss at the end of the day. So if Malik's cool with it, I'm just going to keep doing it. Yeah. And that's what he did. He just kept doing it. And I love how when they announced Halloween 2018 and, and, and when it started coming out, the, that the new trilogy, Malik openly stated, I'm very proud of the Rob Zombie movies. It, they were totally different. They were way out of our comfort zone. But I'm very proud of those two movies. And, and I don't regret that at all. And good for you, Malik, because you shouldn't um, at all. Because... Yeah, I, 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 as much as I have issues with his first movie, and his first movie's fine. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm not somebody that's like, oh, it's just bad. No, I enjoy his first movie enough. But that was a compromised vision from start to finish. It was never truly a Rob Zombie Halloween movie. It was try. It was this weird marriage of of big wigs and John Carpenter and all that. Halloween Two is the true Rob Zombie Halloween movie, and uh, that's why it fucking kicks ass. All right, so here's the other thing I wanted to bring up real quick. For some reason, I just decided to look up Megan on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, God, what? Does it still have like a 95? I'm just fucking floored at this. Again, I never I never care about the tomato tomato meter reviews. I, I could give a shit about what the critic, the quote-unquote critics have on this. But it's got an 80% on the audience score. It's even higher on the critic score. Yep. But... Dude, I kept. I've, I'm gonna have to see this movie. One thing I'll say about that, though, Christian, I saw a critic tweet something yesterday that I actually got mad at, and I replied to. And he was like, "Megan is so fun. It was this. It was that. Um, we have a new horror icon on our hands." <coughs> and I, I, I replied and said, "Y'all have to stop with saying that because it's really frustrating. Do you know how hard it takes to get to icon status?" I'm still not ready to say that Art the Clown is an icon yet. I think he will be. I think he will be. And I have said that on here before. But I would not gun to my head right now say he is. Because becoming a horror icon or an icon of anything, you have to have multiple movies. Longevity. Have, yeah. yeah. You have to last for decades. Like, did Michael, Freddie, and Jason didn't become icons overnight. No. no. So stop with one fucking movie. Oh my God, we've got a new icon. No, you don't know. It's thrown word. around. It's thrown yeah. around. The word's thrown around very loosely. Like, yeah, you have to earn it. Like Jigsaw or the character of John Kramer. That's a horror icon. And he, yes, he and fucking earned it. it. We're fucking 10 movies in now. Like, yeah, yeah. he earned that shit. Um, Megan is going to be another typical Blumhouse property. What do I mean by that? It's going to make a lot of money with this first movie. They'll make a sequel, a sequel, and then they're and gonna say "fuck it." Yep, it won't do as well. <laughs> it'll do. It'll make money, but not as much as the first one, and then they'll abandon it because that's what they do. And before you go, that's not true. They always uh, do that. I would, <laughs> I would like to show you Happy Death Day one and two. I would like to also show you uh, what else? I just fucking had uh, Sinister one and two. I could keep going. It's what they do all the time. The sequel makes money, but not as much as the first one. And then they're like, oh, you know what? No. Didn't make enough. Yeah. Nope. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. Yeah. I don't know, dude. It, it's. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to see this movie, though, just to just to stop being. Just Bombarded. to stop. Just, yeah. Not even that. Not even that. Just to like just to know. Am I to me? It just looks so stupid. But. I, you know, yeah, it looks corny. I, maybe enough people, enough people can't all be wrong. Maybe it's just entertaining and fun. And if that's the case, cool. If it's making money, God bless it. Good. That's good for, that's good for horror. So, hey, Lee was one of the few rotten reviews for critics on Rotten Tomatoes, and he like made a whole video addressing it because his review was still like decently positive. He didn't hate the movie, but it was more like middle of the road for him. And, uh, I feel like I'll probably have the same reaction. And there's probably somebody, some people right now going, well, you can't go into it thinking that, you know, you don't know. I do know though, because I can see that the vibe that that movie's going for, 
And I just don't know if I'm on board for that. To me, I going really in a horror know. comedy almost seems like they're again, people are listening that have seen the movie and they're probably saying, stop talking about it. You haven't seen it. Yep. But to me, it almost seems like the horror comp because the, the doll thing is so advanced AI to me, it could be really creepy if they went in a serious direction. But the fact is, it doesn't. It's it's clearly a horror comedy. So yes, and I'll just tell you from what I've read, Christian, uh, about how the movie, what it does, it does not go hard in that direction. I doubt it. it so, I've heard it's very PG with its kills. Yeah. So, so lady, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna go see it. Well, it's funny when this episode comes out, I should have seen it by now. I probably will have too. Spoiler alert! It's it's Sunday right now when we're recording this, but this is coming out on Friday. Yeah, Happy we, we, Friday! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we just had our episode drop today of the yeah. top 100 list. So, yeah, but hey, this was a good episode. It, it was, it was a great episode actually. Again, we watched Jason Lives. It set <laughs> the did. tone. We set the tone. It's it's good to start the conversation. Um, you probably heard a little bit of the movie in the background from one of our mics. So at least you, you <laughs> at least you knew we were watching it. Dude, I had it turned down to five too. Yeah, you could still hear a little bit of it. But oh, whatever. it's all good. I, I actually kind of like it when I can just barely, barely hear it because it, it just it's it's atmosphere to me. But um, yeah, and th this, th I mean, this is the format you guys like. We you know we've heard your feedback. You know, when we watch movies, you like for us to not just focus on the movie because it's like you've all seen the fucking movie. Like, right? You what are we gonna to say? Part every scene. Like, Jason's yeah. mask looks good. Wow. Yeah. Look at, how look at the way Jason. There. Yeah. Yeah. It's like what what can't be said that hasn't already been said about these movies, but that doesn't mean you don't watch them. Of course, they're part they're they're you know, they're burger and fries. It's like, yeah, you want to eat them all the time. I love watching these movies, but what I love is just letting them envelop the room and talking and reminiscing. Like that's this is the most fun thing to me. Is to put on a movie that I love and have a good time and talk. I mean, you can't get much better than that. Yeah, so. and you guys got the return of the uh, the Yeti mic. So. so, can we talk about this? Just like I want to get this on the episode really quick before we end. That way, so we got because if for some reason it ever happens again, we can literally go back and listen to this. So this may not be the most amazing thing for the audience, but in case you're wondering <laughs> about technical stuff, we we took your mic volume on your computer, backed it down, and then you took the volume in Streamyard. And then that wasn't the kicker. The kicker was what the it was internet. defaulting to the no, default. It was, it was defaulting my audio. When you, when you have an external mic like this, it'll have multiple options for that mic. It'll say default, uh, Yeti stereo, blah, blah, blah. It'll say communications, Yeti stereo. And then there's one that just says microphone, Yeti stereo. That's and the it, one you gotta do. It defaults to default, you know, Yeti stereo. And it was crackling and it seemed like a latency issue. And I was like, there's no, like, I because it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Like I have quick internet, like I'm not running anything else on my laptop that would like create a latency issue. Like it doesn't make any sense. As soon as I clicked just microphone for the, the Yeti, it was gone, gone. Yeah. Just like and that. then, and then what happened? And then what happened a few minutes ago? Because remember when we started, we tried to start. That would, were... Yeah. My internet, like my internet was acting fucking screwy. So I just switched to the, um, 5g now uh, let me ask network. you something because you are it's been flawless it's been great is this something you're not supposed to do when you do it using computer or is this something that's worth does it cost you money or something no, or is this something you no. can you went with with a lot of internet providers nowadays uh depending on where you live because like in certain areas it won't offer this option but you can have your regular network and you can have your network but a 5g version of your network and people might go well what's the difference to be honest with you, I don't really know aside from what I was told when they set it up when I first asked. And basically all they said was 5G is faster than your normal, just your, your base network. But if you're not close to the modem, it's not going to work. So you should use 5G as much as you can because it's going to be quicker. It's going to be optimal Okay. Internet for you, but you have to be close to your modem. Well, my modem is right behind my movie shelf. So right, you're like, good. Yeah, yeah, it's right there, just a few feet away. So 
I was like, fuck it. I'll switch to the 5G. And guess what? As soon as it's, I did, not boom. a technical issue. You know what? Here's something interesting. I didn't understand this till people explained it to me. I thought until I started using my Ethernet, which clearly has improved my internet greatly. When I would do my internet speed test, it always show my download speed going up to 60, 70, blah, 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 which most people have a hundred megabyte download speed, which I do now. But since I'm plugged up ethernet, I'm maxing out. But then people, some people said, Christian, no, 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 no. When you're streaming, you're technically uploading. So your image and your audio that's being all uploaded in real time. So that's what you have to improve. So that's why I really needed to be plugged up ethernet to make my, what happened? You got bad news? Another football team loss or something? No, my team won today, but no, oh, this shit, this is the type of shit I'm seeing, dude. Someone goes, the tweet says, this is the same image, right? To be funny. I will say this again for all of you motherfuckers. <laughs> Smile borrowed from movies like Evil Dead. Deadites have been creepy smiling since 1980. Stop saying that Evil Dead Rise is copying Smile. Smile copied movies like Evil Dead, not the other way around. Fucking Christ. Like, <laughs> I get it. I get it. All you motherfucking kids just saw Smile and you're like, oh my God, this movie's trying to rip it off. No, Smile ripped off movies like that. Like, Fuck, man. It's so annoying. Like, educate yourself on fucking horror, for Christ's sake. Anyway, um, yeah, sorry. No, but anyway, yeah, I agree. But yeah, so it's your upload speed that matters when you're streaming. So thankfully, I'm good now. But I, I have to... My horror room is literally the farthest from away from the, from the modem. And dude, I had to buy a 150-foot cable. Nick, I have this thing ran up against the ceiling with little plastic hooks we let you use with like the m3 tape on there that i put on the wall yeah so this cable runs right out of here and it's you wouldn't see it unless you look for it when you're in my house but this motherfucker is ran and finally i convinced city just let me leave it there as long as she doesn't notice it while it's plugged up so now i can keep it plugged up so it was a bitch but i had to and the damnedest thing was my internet was fine for a while plug but it up yeah plug it up but there when these go. these comcast cocksuckers bought my company their internet just sucks. It's the same thing, but it just sucks. It's not the same. It doesn't run anywhere near as good. So trial and error. We we figure shit out. You know, we want to give you guys the best show. I'm an audio guy. I don't really care how good the videos look because you're seeing squares inside of a square. So it's they're not going to look bad. But I I really take pride in audio and making the show sound good. And I I would tell Nick and people would say I would ask people they'd say Hey, just finish the podcast. I said. Does, how does everything sound with Nick's? He's using his earbuds. He goes, that's fine. I mean, it's, you know, it doesn't really sound bad at all. And I was like, good, good. But like, when we have good audio, I know it's just that much better for the Night listener. Night and day. Night, Night and, day. and day. So, and on I, that note, guys, we're going to wrap her. Yeah. So I think the next episode is going to be that horror list. Is Again, if you're watching this right now and you saw the last episode and you want that, let us know down below. And also, happy Friday the 13th. Tell us what movie you may be... Because I'm a lot of you guys are probably enjoying the day, so you may be watching this episode on Saturday or Sunday. But let us know what your movie is you're focusing on this year. Which Friday the 13th are, were you excited to watch uh, this go around or, or that you did watch and anything like that? And tell me about the Crystal Lake show. What are you expecting? What do you want to see happen? Remember, everything is on the table, guys. Everything. So... Maybe we'll see something like a trailer with for that or some kind of teaser or something this summer. I got to imagine this stuff's the ball's rolling by this point for this, you know, especially yeah. since you said they didn't you say that they, they approved two seasons. Yeah. <laughs> two seasons. <laughs> yep. Oh, shit. Do you have anything you want to add, Zeke? A yawn. All right. Anyway. Dog's ready to my, the dog's oh, ready to wrap it. That's the cat. The cat. Okay. This is Zeke. Yeah. Zeke. All right, Zeke. What do you say, Zeke? You ready to you ready to wrap it? But yeah, guys. As Christian said, Happy Friday the Thirteenth. Um, next week we'll be back at it, recording that list. We've got like a week where we can you know jot down 
movie ideas and we'll go back and forth. And if any of us double up, obviously I'm sure there's going to be some double dipping. So um, we'll get it to where we have a hundred that in no particular order, like I said, guys, because if we try to do this in particular order, it's going to take even longer. It's going to take so much longer. We're not going to do that. And also we're not going to agree on order. So that's not the point. The point is to get a hundred horror movies that we feel unequivocally deserve to be on the 100 best horror movies ever list period and we're just going to shoot from the hip with that and uh yeah i mean we'll give our opinion too and be like this movie would definitely be in this range this would be in this range but like specifically no because that would take way too long for for us to parse all that out um yeah we're excited to create the addendum and uh give you guys the actual list the actual list (laughs) yep (laughs) all right guys let me leave y'all with this if you've got anything going on in your life right now that's not great, listen to me. Hang in there. Life has a way of working itself out. Look at how awesome it is to be a horror fan right now. We've got so many great movies to look forward to. It's going to be fucking incredible. And guess what? There's going to be movies we don't even know about that's going to come out of left field and kick our asses. So get ready for Scream. Get ready for Evil Dead. And that's before fucking summer, guys. Before summer, okay? Okay. So let's make 2023 the best fucking year possible. All right. That's right. Happy Friday the 13th. God bless you all. And God damn it. We'll see you next time.